Well, it's day 30 of the carnivore diet. And, uh, you know, compared to things I've listened to, I, I think I'm doing pretty good. Uh, we got, I'm down 12 plus pounds. Uh, I've, I think I'm totally ketosis now, in a state of ketosis. I uh, just finished a, a good book. Where is it here? Uh, this right here. It's probably backwards. Philip Ovadia. Stay off my operating table. Yeah, stay off my operating table, he says. A real practical approach, even if you're doing any of the main diets, like from you know keto, ketovore, carnivore. Um, vegetarian even has good advice for vegetarians and and paleo so uh, you know his main emphasis is metabolic health and you know if you got metabolic health you know you and it's different for every person but he himself finds carnivore to be the easiest and he's kind of on carnivore himself so um, that was encouraging because that's what I find the easiest. You know, my wife kind of laughs at me, uh, you know, because it's so quote restrictive, but it, it really isn't because I, I'm totally satiated. I can eat till I'm comfortably stuffed, you know, and I've always been a portion guy. I feel horrible when I'm doing portion control and I don't have to control portions and you, you virtually can't overeat eating meat like if you can eat too much meat you're you're an animal i mean you're you just don't feel like doing it you know it's not like potato chips where you can eat one bag after another uh it's just you're you're done and all of a sudden that meat doesn't look good anymore and then you don't feel like eating anything else so you know you, you kill all your other cravings and i had uh i've been avoiding all artificial sweeteners everything and I accidentally took some electrolyte that was flavored and I took it, I just about spit it out. It's like, man, uh, I don't even really care for sweet anymore. Salty is my new sweet. <laughs> so i uh, having a great time with this and I, I really feel like um, I'm, I'm, in, I'm excited to see how my climbing is going to do. You know, I mean, I'm a tree climber, game of trees. We're having fun. And so one of my reasons for doing this is is to really get in shape for the, the September competition in Wisconsin that I'm entered in. And so it's going to be fun kind of getting in shape for that and doing this at the same time. I really feel like I, I'm going to feel young again, <laughs> you know, and that's that's going to be a good side benefit to it. But I, I just had to reschedule our, our doctor appointment. Lisa and I are going in to get our numbers checked. And it was gonna be September something, September 18th. And I had to reschedule it, ended up August 29th. So that's gonna be almost 90 days in. So I'm gonna have a full 90 days and say you really at 90 days, you should have pretty clean numbers. So it's going to be interesting that that is going to be a real telltale test. And now I've got to talk her into doing what Dr. Ovadia wants me to test because his main markers, uh, he doesn't even look at LDL cholesterol if the other five markers are good. And those markers are one, your waist size, under 40 for men, under 35 for women, your, your glucose, blood glucose level, fasting blood glucose, under 100. Uh, and then you can look at fasting and insulin, and I forget what number that needs to be at, but that kind of goes with the glucose. And then uh, blood pressure, under 130, under 85. So over 85, under 85 for the bottom number. And then uh, HDL, cholesterol higher than 40 for men, higher than 50 for women. And the triglycerides under 150. If those are all good, he doesn't even need to see LDL. 
Now I'm gonna also ask for a particle size test for LDL because that will tell me if I got the light fluffies, which are supposed to be good, or you know the hard oxidized bad guys. And you know what's interesting, he, he points out too that the cholesterol in your veins is essentially from your veins getting damaged by sugar. And then the cholesterol goes in there to try to repair that. Okay, so then we're gonna we're gonna lower the cholesterol but not do anything with the sugar. That that seems like that's a bad thing. Like we're we're undercutting the defense mechanism of the body and then not fixing the primary cause. So if I've cut out all my sugar, the LDL is it's just gonna be doing what it, it does. And one of those things it does is help with making testosterone. Like, why do I wanna kill my testosterone? Why do you think there's a, everybody's got low T these days? Well, it's because everybody's cutting their cholesterol. So I'm gonna be happy with, with some high cholesterol. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're gonna see how this goes. But, you know, I kind of equate it to, like, back in the day in arboriculture, they used to tell you to flush cut the pruning cuts. Flush cut them right to the trunk. You'll get a better, it'll heal over better. And Dr. Shigo found out that when you flush cut like that, you get decay running rampant. Because that branch collar that everybody's cutting off, or the bark ridge that everybody's cutting off, is actually the defense mechanisms that, that contains the decay. So similarly, we, we lower our cholesterol, our LDL cholesterol, because it's supposed to be bad, but it's actually a defense mechanism against wounded veins. And all we have to do is fix what's wounding the veins, and we don't have to worry about the cholesterol. That makes sense to me as an arborist. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, and this isn't medical, medical advice, but it makes sense in my mind. And so I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with this, uh, I, I have no problems with the diet. I have no discomfort, no nothing. Everything's sailing along perfect. So, game of trees. We're having fun.